All right, so let's look at the question from the discussion board uh, for module 10. So this module is all about optimization, um, which is basically taking all of the calculus techniques and skills you have, uh, especially around derivatives and uh, putting them in a, in a context. Um, it's impossible for us to give you like, to expose you to every way these questions might be posed or every way these problems might look, but um, basically throughout this module, we wanted to give you as like as much of a variety as we could to kind of, you know, maybe try to point out to you what things are common, what kind of things you can repeat, what um, maybe an approach that if it doesn't necessarily work every time, um, you can kind of modify it and and go from there. So typically what you'll have to do is to figure out what your objective function is, which is typically something you want to optimize. So if I want to find the best case uh, scenario, so what is the maximum or minimum, whatever. Uh, in this case, we're told we want to model the area of the window. So this window here is made of two pieces, um, a rectangle and a half circle. So we can write the equation that, or write a function that incorporates both of those pieces. So this is gonna be a area function in terms of both uh, radius and height. So the area of the rectangle is gonna be length times width. The length is 2R, um, height is H. So area there is 2RH. Uh, what about the area of the semicircle? So the area of a circle is pi R squared. R is our radius. Um, we don't have a full circle, we have a half a circle, so that's going to be one half pi r squared. So this is question one. This is this is the objective function. Um, this is the thing we're going to try to optimize. Um, we don't have a good tool to do that in the form it's in because we know how to take derivatives with respect to a single variable. Uh, right now we have two variables, so radius and height can both vary independently of each other. So that is why we need uh, to answer question two. What's the constraint equation? So we want to optimize the area, or at least model the area for now. But what else about this window is, uh, you know, is there a requirement we have to fulfill here? So that is where this comes in. The perimeter of the, uh, the perimeter of the window must be eight meters. So this is objective two, or this this attends to like uh, or part two of this question, um, modeling the area that is part one of this question. So how do I find the perimeter of something? That's going to be the distance all the way around. So the perimeter in terms of R and H is equal to what? Um, I don't have a full rectangle. I have three sides of it. So that'll be, for now, I'll just kind of write these things in order. So starting here and going around this clockwise. So I have H plus 2R uh, plus H again plus half for circumference. So circumference of a circle or the perimeter around a full circle is 2 pi R. We have exactly that. So this is going to be pi R. So can we clean some things up? Um, I think we have 2R plus 2H plus pi R equals. So one thing to uh, remind you of here is that unlike the area, which is can vary, our perimeter is dictated for us to be 8 meters. So here is our constraint equation. Um, so check these off, got one, got two. So now I want to combine these. So both of my, my objective and my constraint equation are functions of two variables. Uh, I would like to combine them in such a way. So I only have one variable. So I want to combine these so that it's a, a 
function of R only. Um, so in order to do that, I'm going to take my constraint equation and solve it for H. So 2H equals 8 minus 2R minus pi R. Uh, if I divide through by 2, I get H equals 4 minus R minus 1 half pi R. So now that I have that expression for H in terms of R, what can I do with it? Uh, I can basically plug that back into my area function. And that'll give me area in terms of radius only. So AR equals 2R times my new H, which is uh, 4. Oh, I can't see it. 4 minus R minus 1 half pi R uh, plus 1 half pi R squared. So I'll clean this up a little bit, but right now we have the objective function in terms of the single variable, uh, which is something we can uh, use calculus to do some more analysis on. But before I get there, I want to, since I want to take a derivative, I would rather simplify this as much as I can. So I have 8R minus 2R squared minus pi R squared plus a half pi r squared. Uh, I can combine my pi r squared terms. So I get 8r minus 2r squared minus a half pi r squared. So this is my new area function in terms of radius only. So what you've probably noticed by now, or uh, if you will notice later, I think the discussion class will probably the first one of these you kind of looked at, but as you work through these optimization problems, um, you're typically going to have to find an objective function, which is what's the thing I want to optimize. Um, this window, I can't, it, it's hard for me to say, it's hard for me to ask you what the maximum area is if I could just make everything as big as I want, but that's not the case. Um, that's where the constraint comes in. I want this perimeter to be no bigger, or I want this to be exactly eight meters uh, in distance around. Um, so this is a constrained optimization, which is a, a phrase you'll hear more of when you get on the Calc 3, for those of you who are going on the Calc 3, but I want to make the make the best case scenario for situation, but there's probably some requirement you have to fulfill. Those two things working together um, will give you an equation that hopefully is in one variable that you can deal with uh, using the, the tools we've kind of given you in calculus. So now that we have this, uh, part four asks us to uh, find the critical value of R. So how do I find critical values? I have to take a derivative. So A prime of R is equal to eight minus four R minus pi R. And I'm set and set that equal to zero because that's where critical points happen when the first derivative is equal to zero. So I wanna solve this for R, so let's work on isolating it. Uh, I'm gonna get the eight alone because that'll put all my R terms on one side. So I get four R plus pi R equals eight. I'm gonna factor an R out of the left-hand side here and I get four plus pi times R equals eight, which means my critical value of R is what? 8 over 4 plus pi. So I found my critical value. Now what I want to do is figure out if this gives me a minimum area or a maximum area. So there are a couple ways to do this. I'm going to focus on one. Um, but now, so I'll do one and I'll kind of talk to you about it. what other options you have. I am going to do the second derivative test. Um, because I know that if I have a critical point and if the second derivative is equal to something non-zero, that tells me what kind of critical points I have. So find the second derivative. A double prime of R is equal to what? Um, derivative of eight is zero because eight's a constant. Um, minus four, minus pi. Okay, so my second derivative is constant and it is a negative number. 
So I have a critical point at which the second derivative is negative. What does that mean? That means I have a local uh, maximum. So maximum area at r equals 8 over 4 plus pi. Um, so this is the second derivative test. Um, you can also use the first derivative test and test a value, test a, a value just less and just greater than your um, your critical value, and that will give you uh, that'll give you the same conclusion. It'll also tell you have a local maximum. So, um, so I put this in as a discussion question. There are probably many ways you can attack this, um, but hopefully this makes sense.